Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're shooting a DBA 2.2 playthrough. I was suggested by a friend who follows the channel to purchase these rules and have a read. And um, I was quite impressed with the simplicity of the rules, but at the same time, they're not uh, simple, if I can um, use this expression. Um, I've, I know DBMM, I've played DBMM, there's a lot of complication there and a lot of rules that you have to remember, but this DBA keeps the essence of a good strategic game with a lot of strategic options that you have to think about, but at the same time reducing the complexity. So you reduce um, the movement for only tactical, uh, you reduce the types of troops, uh, to generic troops, blades, uh, mounted uh, cavalry. Although I have a reservation there and I'll tell you how you can resolve it if you want to stay. I know that there is a DBA 3.3, DBA but now we're going to talk about 2.2. Now you have the rules that you have also DBA uh, large battle where you can have almost 36 elements, but now I'm keeping this small with 12 elements per uh, army and when four elements are removed and destroyed, you lose the battle and one commander. Uh, so let's see how you must think about deployment and how important it is. So let's go here to the French. What do you have to think when you're deploying in general? Obviously, you have to think uh, your strategy, uh, where you're going to push from. Maybe you want to load more units in the flanks and deploy in the flanks and attack from the flanks. Maybe you want your center to be stronger. But at the same time, you have to think about rare supports, uh, recoils, if the units that they're supporting um, will be destroyed, if the unit fighting it will be destroyed, like with the spearmen. So you have this option to say, okay, I will have spearmen who give a plus one, uh, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but if the if, if fighting unit is destroyed, they're destroyed as well. Uh, you have to think about recoils and which units can push back which units and which units cannot be pushed back Then the fighting unit is destroyed. Also, there's a nice uh, rule called pass-through, so if uh, a unit fighting is recoils, it can pass through the unit supporting it or the unit that's behind it. So, in this way, you avoid having gaps in your line and you can um, fight uh, your opponent again uh, in the next round and you don't leave a gap here where the your opponent can't take it can take advantage of so all these things are important to think while you're deploying so here in the french we have mounted knights here i'm loading the flanks uh, with the general is here where is the general i think is over here, no, the general is here. So, uh, loading the flanks. If the French mounted knights are pushed back, they can move through their, uh, they can pass through other mounted knights. So, I can have a second line without being um, afraid that this uh, rare line will break and uh, I can hold um, my flanks without being exposed if these knights are destroyed. Here you have a unit of crossbowmen. Again, crossbowmen would be good if they are supported by uh, blades or spears that can pass through. Uh, one unit of spears and uh, another unit of spears with a spear support, double-edged knife, they give a plus one, but at the same time, uh, if the unit fighting is destroyed, they get destroyed. A unit of warband, two units of warband that support each other, they have rare support, and here the general and another unit of uh, mounted knight. So this is how is the setup, and I explained to you how you have to think uh, while deploying. Now for the English, again, um, a bit more linear lineup. Um, Longbowmen here, who are in the flanks to shoot the opposing mounted knights. Um, I could have blades or spears behind them. If they recoil, uh, they can pass through them. But if they lose from mounted knights, they're automatically destroyed. So there's no option. Here, blades, again, English men at arms, who can um, pass through uh, other English men at arms. My, my criticisms would be that um, we have to find a way to um, separate the English men at arms foot knights who are really the superior ones with the other blades uh, who are ordinary. You can um, have some of them as warbands, obviously, because they're militia, but uh, you can use some uh, DBMM rules if you want by giving a superior unit a plus one um, 
fighting uh, modifier during his bound, so we can we can do this. It's not difficult. And the same criticism will be for the longbowmen who they have the same uh, power as the crossbowmen, so you can give them an extra uh, inch uh, in shooting range. So that could be something that you can resolve easily. So again, these are all. Um, Foot Knights, and again, this is a unit of spearmen, of well spearmen, supporting by another unit of well spearmen, two longbowmen, and here we have two mounted knights with the commander in flanks. I don't know if it's a good idea, but nevertheless. So here is the English lineup. So let's start with the English Ayurveda, so they have um, the initiative. So they're all for pips, so we're all five, and we have five moves. Now, most of the moves. We have only tactical moves. We don't have any other moves that we have in DBMM. Most of the moves are tactical and uh, they cost one personal initiative point unless you have some other uh, prerequisites where you have an elephant or um, some uh, different situation. I'm not going to talk about them. It's quite simple. Um, you can do, if you want, more than one tactical move, again, under some circumstances. For example, if infantry is in a column or in roads. And... Um, uh, this is basically a one pip cost for all moves unless you are outside your command range. So if you are outside 1,020, uh, 1,200 paces, you need another uh, personal initiative, another pip. Uh, if you are outside 600 paces and you are blocked by a terrain piece, so if, for example, the commander is here and you are here and you are more, more than 600 paces and you're blocked, again, you need an extra personal initiative point. So the English will move uh, as a group, so I will use one personal initiative point, they'll move as a group, uh, the, the movement of infantry in DBMM rules, in DBA 2.2 is 2 inches, so they will move 2 inches as a group, obviously the mounted knights here will have to follow the slowest uh, elements movement rate, so all of them will move 2 inches, and um, I will move them. Uh, we don't, we're not going to have shooting. I'm going to uh, roll also for the French, so you can see I'm not going to show you everything. Um, another four, so the French have four, four initiative points, and um, I'm going to show you where we are. So both armies moved uh, as a group. Uh, when you're in a group, uh, the distance doesn't matter. It's considered that even though if you are more than 1,200, if this is the case, um, if you are attached to the group, yeah, and the general is attached, that means that you are in command range. So this uh, happened, now we're going to have the English bound again, and the English will roll again for initiative, they roll two personal initiative points, uh, again they're going to move as a group, we don't have shooting because we're outside shooting distance, and I'm going to move them, then I'm going to move the French and uh, get back to you. Just thing I need to say is that these are 40 by 40 bases, obviously it's not the DBX base that DBM, DBA are using, um, so if you are moved um, pushed back, you are moved one base depth. Uh, you have the option of by one base width and by one base depth in DBA. Um, but here, of course, obviously this option is not uh, available because um, uh, you have a square basis. But I don't think it, it takes out from the game, and you will see how this uh, works. Now, next will be the, the French finish the bomb. They don't have anything else to do. They can charge uh, now because of their movement afterwards. So now it's the English bound. Uh, let's put this to the English commander so we know whose bound it is. And uh, they roll. So they roll two. They have two initiative points, uh, personal initiative points. Uh, the English are not going to move. And what they're going to do is going to shoot. And let's say a little bit about shooting. Now, the arc of fire is basically uh, extended uh, a base uh, width extension from the actual unit. Uh, let's go here. So I, if, if I put it here in the center, you will see that the arc of fire of this unit of longbow is basically these three units, uh, the crossbowman and the two mounted. Uh, the same if I do it in uh, the other longbow unit beside it, uh, we can see that we have similar or uh, the same um, targets. So this can be uh, the my main unit shooting and these can support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot with this longbow unit against uh, this unit of mounted knights because it is in my arc of fire and it is also in the arc of fire of the uh, supporting unit. So let's see how this works. 
when somebody is not shot back. So we roll 2d6 and we have a 4 for the longbows and 3 for the mounted knights. Now the mounted knights will get a minus 1 for the unit supporting in shooting, so they will go at 2. Now you have to go to the combat factors because the combat factors are the same um, in DBA, the 2.2. Very, very simple rules, but really um, you will see the strategy plays an important role, especially the rare supports, the pass throughs, everything. So if you go and see, you will see that the bows have a plus, plus four modifier against mounted, so they go eight, uh, and the mounted uh, have a plus um, three against foot. A plus three against foot, so we'll have eight against five. Uh, as we said, this would have been six, but they get a minus one from the support of the supporting fire unit. So basically, the mounted units lost, but not more than half. And then you will go to the combat result table and see knights um, who, if the element's combat score or shooting uh, is less, but more than half. They are destroyed against elephants, camelry, light horse, or sky chariots, skid chariots, in bad going, otherwise they recoil. So this unit will recoil. They will recoil one base depth. Now, because it can pass through all the mounted knights, as per DBA rules, it will go behind it. It won't push it. So that's very important to know in battlefields. It's very important. This is a very nice rule about pass through and pushes. Not many rules have it. Um, you need to know when you're deploying or you need to be aware uh, the pass-throughs and recoils so you can um, not have destroy your supporting units or the second line of your army, especially in a bigger battle. So if we go here in this uh, longbow units, again, uh, we're going to see that both mounted knights are within their arc of fire and the distance, obviously. It's... Uh, three inches. As I told you, I gave one inch more to the Longbowman, so I can make it a bit more realistic. And um, we will have the same situation here. The Longbow unit will fire against this unit of mounted knights, who is actually uh, a general, and we'll see how this works, with the support of uh, the unit here. So let's, so let's roll 2d6 and see. So we have a three and a one by shooting from the English. And we will reduce the 3 to a 2 because the general is um, uh, shot by 2 units. Now, uh, again, we'll go to the modifiers and we know that uh, the bows get a plus 4 against um, the mounted knight, the mounted units. And the mounted, uh, and the mounted get a pl knights get a plus 3 against foot. The French will get another plus 1, so they will go at 3 because it's the elements general. So we have a 6 and a 5, so it's a victory for the mounted, So not, because the mounted are not shooting back, nothing happens. And now we have the crossbow unit. The crossbow unit cannot shoot, obviously, because of my house rules, so I can make a distinction between longbows and crossbows. As per the rules, the shooting distance is 2, and we're not 2 yet. For the longbows, I did it 3, so I can have a distinction, a house rule. So now that we finish shooting, we don't have to hand-to-hand -hand combat, the English didn't move, and we'll go now back to the French. So, let's put the initiative back to the French, and let the French roll three. So, they have three uh, personal initiative points, and let's see what they will do. Now, I can do shooting now with the crossbowman, and I will shoot at this unit of uh, blades. These are ordinary blades. So, let's see how this works. Again, we're going to roll 2d6 and uh, four for the French, two for um, the English. Now the crossbowmen get a four against mounted. There's no distinction between crossbowmen and longbowmen. There wasn't, maybe we can say from close range actually. So the bows will get a four. Uh, and um, the blades now, we're fighting blades. Blades uh, get a five against foot. Uh, so we don't have a second crossbow unit shooting, so there's no minuses here. So we have an 8 against the 7, so a victory for uh, the bows. And we'll go now and see what it means for the blades. Uh, the blades uh, would probably uh, recoil. So the blades will recoil back one base. So let's see what happened to shooting. Uh, the English broke and destroyed the mounted knight's element here. The, it was doubled. 
so a good shooting for the English. They weakened the French right flank. And here on the other side, uh, the English pushed back and uh, the unit of the general's unit recalled back one base. So the English are doing quite well at shooting. And now they will take the initiative. They were all pips and obviously we're going to have hand-to-hand -hand combat here. Something I need to say is the movement. The movement is very simple and typical of the BMM. Uh, an element moves uh, as long as it moves its uh, exact distance in any position. I mean, um, you, cal you calculate uh, from the furthest edge and it can move like this, turn like this, move like this, go back, go forth, go, it can go any side. Sometimes this moves, um, this simple moves, um, not frustrate me, but um, puzzle me because some moves look very easy that wouldn't have been in another rule set and I don't know if have been done. So I'm still trying to understand by watching games, there are many really good games in uh, the YouTube. Um, and obviously the unit, uh, the um, uh, group moves typically as other rules uh, together and you know, you have to, uh, in order for you to turn, you turn as a group, you know how it is, you keep this, you keep this corner fixed and then you calculate uh, the distance from the corner of the uh, foremost unit and you move. This is uh, the moves that basically are in this rule set. So now we have the English who are going to charge. Let's roll for initiative and they have two only. So let's see what the English are going to do. They're going to, first of all, charge um, as a group here one, for one initiative point. So I'll keep one here. They have to be aligned. So we'll align them. This is something I need to um, understand in DBM how you align exactly. So I think I would align like this. Sometimes I I, um, I give myself uh, logic um, on how things would work. So we align them. So we so we have one initiative point only. So what I will do is uh, with this group of mounted knights, I will charge this um, mounted knight unit here that's isolated. This is my commander also. These are my moves. I don't have any more personal initiative points. Um, I have shooting, obviously, that I can do um, against uh, this unit of uh, mountain knights again. And then again, this unit of mountain knights will recoil the generals. So let's have a look. Again, we roll 2d10, 2d6. The French roll a 5 and the English roll a 5. Um, Let's remove here and see the English because they're shooting with the support. The general will be a four, but because his general gets a plus one, so it's a five. Um, and the English have a five, as we said. Uh, now, against mounted, the English have a modifier of four. Against foot, the knights have a modifier of three. So we have an eight and a nine. Uh, they, it, he recoils again. Here will be exactly the same, but we don't have a general, so they won't get a plus one. The, French, we'll roll again. We we'll roll a two under two minus one for the French because they're shot by support. And then you get the English four, the against foot, the mounted knights three, if I'm not mistaken, against um, foot, sorry, and this against mounted. So it's six and a four. It's not doubled, but it's pushed back. As we said, we have the pass through and We'll go like this. So really interesting. You see how very interesting the battle is with the shooting and the recoils. So now we finish shooting. We're going to go in hand-to-hand -hand combat and see how this will work. Now the phasing player has to decide where he will start from and it's very important because you may give your other hand-to-hand -hand combat advantage. First of all I will start from here and why I will start from here because I have uh, the general and I'm out flanking, I have a support here, so I get some bonuses. So let's roll d10 and see, um, d10, excuse me, uh, d6 and see what's going to happen. So both roll a 5. So I have the overlap as the English, so I get a 1. Well, not a 1, I get a minus 1, excuse me, for the mounted knights. When you're overlapping, you get a minus 1. Now a general fighting is a plus one for, um, so the English go at six. Now the combat factor of both knights, because they're knights, uh, is against mounted, is a plus three, so both uh, will get a plus three. So we have a seven and a nine, a victory for the English. And now it, this is uh, very important, you see how important is the overlap? 
because you have identical units and the general fighting gives a bonus. So a victory for mounted, but not doubled, would mean probably that the knights will be pushed back, will recoil. Now they will recoil one base uh, depth. It's the same for me now. But the knights, being impetuous, being knights, have to follow. So we finished Antoine combat here, and now we'll go to the main battle. So the English will probably start... They will start from these English who are... Uh, foot English knights and man at arms, they're superior, so I will give them to make a distinction between normal blades, uh, as it was in DBMM, a plus one uh, in hand to hand combat during their own uh, armies bound. So we are at the English bound, these are superior knights, and I want to make them different, so I will give them plus one. So that's a house rule that uh, I added and actually. I think it works. So we'll start from the center with the English fighting uh, this unit of spearmen. And let's see the strands. Interesting. I'm sorry, I rolled two, two red dice. So we have a three and a two for the spearmen. Now the spearmen have rare support of another spearman, and they get another one for the rare support. So they get a four. There is no overlaps, there is no overlaps because all the units are fighting. So uh, now we're going to go directly to the combat factors. And the combat factors for uh, foot blades is plus five, and for spearmen is plus four against foot. So plus four, plus five for the English, who go to seven, and plus four for the spearmen, who go to five here, and who go to eight. So a victory for the spearmen. So the blades will recoil, and this obviously will give an advantage to the French. So the blades recoil back. Now the blades have the option if they want to follow, but they won't because uh, now they're gonna give uh, an extra uh, support to the other two units. So unfortunately now, um, I, I'll go here because here I'm, I'm outflanked from both sides. So I'll go here. So let's see what the guys will do. Four for the French, two for the English. These are war bands. So let's see what the war bands will do. Now, the spearmen have a support, rare support, so they get another one, so they get go at three. But the warband also supports warband, so the warband will go at five, from four to five. So warband supports warband, rare support. So we have five and three. If we go to check the modifiers, the spearmen against um, a foot, they have a plus four. And the warband against foot has a plus three. So we have an eight and a seven, a victory for the French. But let's see now what it means. Sometimes warbands are special rules. So the spearmen lost, um, and they will recoil. Now, spearmen cannot pass through other spearmen, so they have to push them back. There is no opponent here, uh, so uh, otherwise, if there was an opponent, they would have been destroyed. So again, you need to know that a spearman, um, pushing spearmen, there's no, there's no pass-through, so we'll go and... Uh, We'll be pushing back the spearmen. And um, if the spearmen lost, and they would have been destroyed and the supports as well. The, they, the warbands always have to follow because they're impetuous troops, always warbands, warbands have to follow. So we're in this situation. So you see how the battle changes, how interesting the battle is. Now we go to this unfortunate hand to hand combat, but the English knights are overlapped from everywhere. So let's roll a d10, um, two d6, and see. Let's roll its cop dice. Four and one. Bad, 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 really bad from the English. Now, the English men at arms get a five, uh, and they get another one I gave them because they are superior. They're, well, they're, they're, they're superior. This is a DBM rule. I think I should make a distinction, not make the rules so simplified. So they will go at six at their own bound only. Now, um, the English are fighting spearmen. Spearmen have a four against foot. But now the English have to, to remove one and one from the crossbows and the other spearmen overlapping them, so they will go at four. So we have an eight against the five. So the English are pushed back. Now, the pushed back, they can push through the other unit of uh, blades. The blades can recoil and pass through other blades, so we don't need to push them back. Um, you see how interesting the battle is. You see how the pushbacks and uh, the supports and the rare supports and the passing through and uh, recoils, how they make the battle feel very, very interesting and how it would have been in an ancient or a medieval battle. The lines would change, the, the groups would change, 
the opponents will change and how uh, critical that is. So we finish en train de combat. And we're going to go again now to the French bound. The French haven't committed yet; they're mounted. Uh, I don't want to. I don't know if you want to see all this. So let's roll for the French initiative points. So they get a four, and let's see what they're going to do. And because here is critical. So, so here I'm going to bring this guy for support. Now my question would have been, if he can get outflanked. Yes, he can because he's he's behind the side of the opponent's unit. So I think he could have done it if he moves three. So he could do it. He could have outflanked the English. The issue is that uh, obviously this would give only a plus one support that a unit can take it anyway being uh, beside their opponent. Uh, so the same will be if the unit, if the mounted was here or the same will be here. But in this case, if the French win, uh, the English knights cannot recoil and they are destroyed, and you're going to destroy them. So I will do this. I think it can be done. Um, this is my first move, and so uh, my pips will be at three. I really like these rules. I will move here as a group, so I'll go two, so I can keep supporting, and um, and with other people, I will charge with my mounted, uh, the longbowman. So I finished my uh, initiative points. Um, I do have shooting and I will use uh, my crossbow man against this unit of blades. Now here I cannot shoot at this unit because it's an overlap. So I cannot do anything in shooting phase for the English of this as they um, cannot shoot. There's no other target and here they are fighting. So we'll go again in Antoine combat uh, in this uh, French, um, where is the French commander. Ah, here's a French commander. Bound. And I will start from here. So let's see now how this will work. So let's roll 2d6 and see. So we have a 5 and a 2 for the English. Now, both generals are fighting, so we get, we'll get give a plus 1 for both. 1 and 1. And um, the English will get a minus 1 because they are... Uh, Flanked, they have low, uh, so they get a zero, so they have five and three, um, and that's it. These are the modifiers. The mounted against mounted, they have both uh, units, both elements have the same modifier of uh, four knights against knights, so four for the English, and four that would mean five here um, for the French. So we have seven and nine. So a victory for the mounted knights, the English general. And what will happen now? It will happen that both units will recoil back. And that's a good um, situation for you to see. So they will move back uh, to one base, two inches. The English will follow. And this general will fall back uh, two inches also here. Now, what's the interesting thing here? Because of this recoil, if in the battlefield um, the warbands are pushed back by the English, you will have some interesting situations here. So let's see what's going to happen. So let's do one more hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. I think I'm giving you the idea of how the rules work. And um, let's see. Now, it's the French bound, so the French will decide from where they will start. And obviously, they want to start from here, where they have superiority as, uh, from the mounted. And the English are overlapped here by the crossbowman. They don't have any other support. So we have a 7 and a 6. So a great victory for the English. The knights will recoil back, and the English obviously will not follow up. But what's happening here is we opened for a support for this uh, hand hand combat. And let's see how this will be resolved. So we have an 8 and a 5. The bowmen are destroyed, and the knights will obviously follow up because they are impetuous mounted knights. So it will be like this. So a very interesting situation is developing here. The English left flank is getting weakened, and um, but the French right flank attack is probably stopped. So we have a 10 and a 5. They're doubled. It's a great victory for the French here. They are destroy the English. So that's very bad for the English. We lost two, 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 two elements at the moment. Uh, and now this gives advantage to the remaining hand hand combat. So let's have a look. So we have an 8 and a 10. Obviously, uh, 
it's not a disaster for the English, but they are pushed back. But now you see what's happened here. The English are pushed back and they created again a, a group and um, they have the support of their uh, comrades who were in the second rank. Now here we have, um, they have to recoil, they have to push back, but they have their general here who is blocking the recoil. So this is, see how it works actually. We have to, I have to read the situation. This is very interesting uh, to see how this happens. So here guys, we're in a very interesting situation and I think I know how to resolve it. Now, this element of warband is pushed back. If it could push through the other unit supporting warband um, would have been uh, able to go here in the back, uh, but it cannot go through warband through warband, so they ha he has to push back the supporting element. Now this supporting element is um, meeting another friendly unit, another friendly element, but they're not facing uh, the same direction. So it cannot push it back. Uh, warband cannot pass through mounted knights. This element cannot complete its recoil and it's getting destroyed. Now, if a warband is destroyed, the supporting warband is destroyed as well. So any support that gives plus one, not a plus three, uh, for example, have had pikes that wouldn't be destroyed, it's destroyed as well. So these are destroyed. So the warband is destroyed. So two elements are removed in one and they have another one, three. So one more element to be destroyed from the French and there's an English victory. You see how things change where the scales goes from one side to another. And this happened because I decided to do this flanking move, but the English uh, knight uh, general managed to uh, win the battle and I was pushed back and blocked the recoil of my warband. Well, the battle is not finished, um, but it's very interesting. And I can imagine if you learn the rules better and um, obviously um, have more units and go faster, how interesting this will be. I can see this playing with 28mm as well. We have to say also about zone of control is very simple. The zone of control is basically your base in the BA 2.2. When a unit is in front or within, they can do only one thing when it's uh, within your zone or exactly outside your zone of control. Let's use the white. You can only align if it's not aligned. It can only attack you or fall back. So this is for me, guys. I really enjoyed this battle. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great weekend and bye-bye.